we're on our second week of our series, uh, Unchanging. Um, we had this um, short, uh, parang uh, team building type of outing last uh, this last week, beyond this week, mga staff. And um, kami ni Pastor Patrick, sumabay siya sa kotse ko. So, uh, nagpapatugtog ako doon sa car ko ng mga 80s. Okay? Narinig ko lang sa lolo ko yun, pero bata pa ako. Okay? So, we were listening and then uh, may nag-play ng song. And then, tawa kami yung tao dahil kumakanta kami doon sa kotse. Nag-play yung song na favorite ko. I remember this song nung maliit pa ako. Okay? Actually, high school na ako. So, yung kanta ni Billy Joel na We Didn't Start the Fire. So sabi ng mga millennials, ano yon Okay, so i-download nyo na lang mamaya. And we were recalling those times. Sabi ko, alam mo, Patrick, I used to have a tape of that song. Ano ba di alam niyo kasi tape? Sa museum, meron yan, okay? So, so ito yon ito. Sabi ng mga millennials, ano yan, okay? So you will never understand what a cassette tape is. At kumbaga, pagka may ganyan ka nung araw, may kasamang Walkman, hipster ka pare, okay? So iba dating nun, lalaki ng mga Walkman nung araw. Saka... May yayaman nila nakaka-experience sa mga Walkman noon, okay? So, wala ako niyan, okay? So, I was I was telling Patrick kasi younger pastor natin niya sa 6 and 8. Sabi ko, naalala ko pa, Pat, I used to record dahil mahirap lang kami nung araw, nung araw 'yon. Ngayon, sobrang yaman ko na ngayon, okay? So, <laughs> so mahirap lang kami nung araw, yung classmate ko na anak ng mayor namin sa Kabanatuan, mayaman. Meron siyang original tape. So, nire-record ko. Alam niyo 'yon, di ba? Yung ipe-play mo sa record mo and then Bababa na quality, di ba? The more mo nila record. So akin, mga pantatlong sabit na, ano na, record na, ano na, para medyo bulol na si Billy Joel. Harry Truman, Doris Day. Parang speaking in tongues na siya. And anyway, so yun yung cassette. <laughs> yung mga anak ko, di makakarelate. So. But anyway, dumating naman nung panahon na yun, si Patrick, inabot lang niya yata disc man na. Sino ito kaya inabot niyo pa tong disc, di ba? Mas hipster ka pag may discman ka naman, pare. Ito na, medyo yumayaman na yung pamilya ko niya. May discman na ako nung araw. Okay, lalaki niya, no? Okay, so nakakatawa lang kasi parang it's constantly evolving. Ngayon, hindi mo na kailangan ng discman. Weird mo pag may ganyan ka dito, discman, di ba? Nakabackpack yung baterya, moto light, di ba? So, <laughs> hindi na uso yan, right? So, kaming mga millennials, Spotify na kami. So, wow, okay. Wala kayo niyan, mahal subscription niyan. Okay, so... <laughs> so, so it's like Spotify and then you can just, I mean, pick and choose. Kasi sa CD, bibili ka, isang CD, mga 20 kanta, isa lang ang magandang song, di ba? So yung Loving Siam, tapon na, di ba? So, but then sa Spotify, you can select just what you want to choose and then delete mo kung ayaw mo na. So, it's constantly evolving, isn't it? It's constantly changing. Used to be typewriter and then na-invento yung floppy disk. Sino dito inabot niya by floppy disk? Hindi ko na rin alam yan, Okay. So yung kasal namin ni Grace, naka-VHS, hindi naman Betamax, kay, kay Mon yun, yung Betamax. Naka-VHS, okay? Hindi ko na ma-play ngayon, wala na palang VHS player ngayon. In fact, DVD, wala na ako makita ng DVD players ngayon. So they used to have a time na may VHS, yung first birthday nung 22-year-old namin anak, naka-VHS pa. Used to have a time na may mga taxi na ganyan, ngayon, grab na. Used to have a time na ang daming hotels ngayon, Airbnb, it's constantly changing. VHS no, Netflix na ngayon, on demand, right? So we live in a world na sobrang fast-paced, right? Dumating ang time ngayon, di ba, nung araw, how birthday was celebrated, look at all these presents. Ngayon, wow, look at all these happy birthday notification. Yun na lang, wala nang party ngayon. Di ba parang puro na lang notification. Used to have a time na, ma'am, I'm off to play soccer. Ngayon, nakaupo na lang, nagbe-play ng soccer, right? Grabe yung mundong ginagalawa natin. Pag gusto mo mag-jogging nung unang panahon, warm up, jogging, tapos na. Ngayon, Bago mag-jogging ang isang tao, mag-ano muna ng mga Fitbit nila, mag-ano ng, ng uh, GPS, jogging app, magse-selfie, tapos mag-update ng status. Nakadalawang oras, hindi nakatakbo. Puro pakiyot. Nakita nyo na mga nasa gym, puro pakiyot lang. Yung ganun ng ganun, selfie, tapos tapos na ako mag-gym. Nag-gym ka ba nun? Kumaga, in this world that we're living in, everything is internet-based. Alam niyo IOTs? It's internet on things. Lahat na lang naka-internet-based na. I mean, from door locks to aircon, lahat naka IOTs na. I mean, there used to be a time na parang uh, uh, ilan lang ang may computer, but nowadays, lahat, it's in your phone. In fact, yung bayo ko, uh, may napulot siyang pusa, inalagaan nila sa kumpanya nila, sa office nila, ang pangalan ng pusa niya si Fiber. 
peki to, pare. Yung pusa niya, naka-IOT. Yung food na yon, internet-based yan. Pag gusto niyang pakainin, pipindutilan niya sa phone niya, maguhulog ng pagkain. Ayaman, pusa ka lang to, ah. <laughs> Naka-internet on things pa na pagkain. Kasi pag iniiwanan nila ng weekdays, walang tao sa office, so pinepress lang nila mag magpapakain doon kay Fiber. Teki, pare. Wala lang kayo may mga downside ng technology. I just watch a Netflix documentary about being hacked. Pwede ma-hack yung buong bahay mo and before you knew it, yung hackers can have full control of your house. I mean, kaya it begs me to ask this question. In this world that we're living in, na sobrang fast-paced, there's so much rapid changes in the world, what or who can we hold on to that's constant and unchanging? Technology constantly changing, even people's core beliefs constantly changing. I mean, in America, legal mag-abort. Mag, mag I mean, they've killed millions of babies since nag-start noong 1970s na legal ang abortion. They've redefined marriages and, and now in the Philippines, uh, redefining marriage is now on the table. Alright? Naka-receive kayo ng mga, uh, uh, kung ano, mga Paul and all. In this world na constantly changing, what's something or who's someone that is fixed and constant and unchanging? And that is this series all about. This is all about this unchanging God. In this ever-changing, fast-paced, unconstant, volatile world that we're living in, where everything changes in, in a span of talagang moments lang, nag-iiba lahat, can we rely on something that's unchanging? The Bible says our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. There's a verse that says He's not a man that He lies or changes His mind. Kaya in this series, is all about this unchanging attribute of the God that we're serving. Ang hirap pagka yung Diyos mo, pa iba-iba ng trip, di ba? Yung kunyari, mabait sa'yo ngayon, bukas hindi, right? Ang hirap magkarelasyon sa isang tao na pa iba-iba. Siyempre, papakasalang ka ngayon, bukas hindi na pala, di ba? Yung parang iba, iba, last week, mahal mo ko ngayon, hindi na. Wala na, yung iba, yung iba yung weather. Eh. So it's hard, right? It's hard to have a relationship with someone na hindi mo ma-figure out yung yung ugali dahil pa iba iba. And last year we had this series Unwavering that talks about another patriarch, si Abraham. It's a seven-week series. You can download it po na sa uh, app natin yan or YouTube. And this year naman ang pag-uusapan natin is another patriarch. We're gonna do this every year. Yung anak po ni Abraham and that's Isaac. Last week pinag-usapan po yung birth nito si Isaac. And the whole idea of this series is, God is molding the fate of this young man. God is somehow, remember, si kay Abraham po binigay yung napakagandang promise that affects all of us. In fact, kaya ka nandito ngayon sa church because of the promise given to him. That's like 2,000 plus years ago. And ito pong anak ni Abraham, si Isaac, nag-iisa niyang anak through the promise, dahil we all know yung anak niya doon sa, sa, kay, kay Hagar, hindi yun yung son of promise. Si Isaac needs to, you know, uh, uh, develop this faith as well to this God. Kaya po itong series is all about this uh, unchanging God trying to build and mold the faith of this Volatile kid. Ito pong si Isaac. Kaya po, napakaganda itong series na to. Okay, it's a three-week series, so it's gonna be very easy. So, let's open our Bible to Genesis chapter 26. So, medyo, may asawa na siya this time. Last week, kapapanganak pa lang niya. Ang bilis, ano? Yung mga singles dito, don't you just wish ganun lang kabaling buhay? Last week, kapapanganak lang na itong may asawa na. But anyway, so we're gonna look at the uh, journey of this man named Isaac. And uh, we're gonna see paano na mold yung faith niya. And hopefully, it will give us hope. Tayo na madalas sumablay. Tayo na minsan hyper faith kay God. The following day, bagsak. This message is for you. Now, ikaw, ikaw naman, yung tipong perfect ka na. Bibigyan kita ng jacket. Nasaan yung mga asher? Okay, bigyan ng jacket yung mga perfect na. Meron mga perfect dito? Wala? Okay, good. Magtutuloy-tuloy ako. Kala ko meron. Palitan mo ako dito. Okay. So, we're, gonna, we're just gonna jump into the story. May asawa na siya this time. And we'll see paano na mold yung faith ng mama na to. Okay. In Genesis chapter 26, verse 1. Now, there was a famine in the land. So we all know famine, right? Hindi pa tayo nakaka-experience siguro, pero uh, uh, you, you'll have an idea what a famine is. May drought, may tagtuyot. Walang makain, walang tumutubong pananim. So there was a famine in the land kung saan siya nakatira. 
And this was beside the former famine that was in the days of Abraham. So, ang galing ng Bible, even that in-include niya, para hindi tayo malito. In fact, that former famine was around 90 years ago. Okay, are you getting the point? Pinag-usapan na natin yung kay Abraham, may famine. Same thing ang ginawa nila, papunta si Isaac ng Egypt. Alright, it says here, and Isaac went to Gerar. Taka dyan si Gerard Anderson. Okay? <laughs> Hindi iba yan, okay? So sa iba yung Gerar na yan. Gerard dyan, okay? And then he went to meet with the king ng Philistine, si Abimelech. Now, if you can recall, si Abraham, yung tatay niya, pumunta rin dito sa Gerar, na meet din niya tong Abimelech, pero hindi siya yon, Okay? Maaring lolo na niya to, o lolo niya yung namit ni Abraham because this was like 80 to 90 years ago. So, tinan natin yung mapa para hindi tayo malito, okay? So, si Isaac was, was somewhere here. Nandito lang naman siya tumatambay sa area na yan. Hindi lagalag tong tao na to, hindi katulad ng tatay niya. And pumunta siya dito sa Gerar with the idea of going to Egypt. Okay, I get in the point? Now, we all know na yung Egypt, laging ayaw ni God papuntahin ng mga, mga tao niya sa Egypt. So, kumuha siya ng ticket, may connecting flight to Egypt. Nag-stop over sa Gerar, okay? So, magre-refuel yung camel kasi lumet na yung mga hump ng camel. <laughs> Uhaw na, so iinom dun sa Gerar. Alright? So, you're getting the point. Ang, ang, ang Gerar is the border. The border of Canaan. Pagtawid niya lang dyan, Egypt na. And, and, and sometimes, we can relate to this. Sometimes, as Christian, I don't know about you, Pero madalas, remember, Egypt has always been a sign of sin. Ayaw ni God pumunta si Abraham sa Egypt and all. Si Isaac, papunta na rin na Egypt, yun yung binili niyang flight. And sometimes, nandun lang tayo sa border. And, and there are Christians na minsan alam mong mali yan, pero nandito ka sa dulo, parang nandito ka sa edge, okay? I call that mga borderline Christian. Hmm. Ano yung borderline Christian? Yung sala sa init, sala sa lamig. Christian pag Sabado, pag Linggo, kampo na ni Satanas. May mga kilala ba kayong ganon? Christian sa nguso, hindi sa puso. Yung hindi mo ma-figure out, Christian ka pa talaga? O kapangalan mo lang talaga si Christian, alright? And, and sometimes we, we, we tend to be like that. We're hot or cold. Uh, I'll tell you something. God doesn't want lukewarm Christian. It's either you're hot or cold, but you can't be both. It's either you're black or white, but you can't be gray. And then, tingnan natin. And then God appeared to him. Ang galing, ang bait ni God, ano? The Lord appeared, okay, and said, do not go down to Egypt. Wag kang pumunta nun. You know what famine does? Sometimes famine causes us to causes us to take matters into our own hands. Alam nyo po kasi yung famine, again, it's hard to relate because hindi tayo maka-experience kasi ang daming grocery, may nagkaroon ng mga uh, uh, tag, tag-unos or whatever, ang bilis bumili na, sa mga restaurant and all. During this time, walang mga kainan na katulad natin ngayon. So pag walang produce ang land, mamamatay ka sa gutom. In fact, mga mga recorded throughout uh, the Bible, pagka may famine, to the point, kinakain nila mga poops na ng animal, animals kinakain. There was even a famine in the Bible, kinain nila tao. So the famine, uh, it's a survival mode. Pagka may famine, naka-hype beast ka. Pag famine, it's a survival mode. The goal, is, oh, the, 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 your goal is to survive, so we, we, we go to our defaults. We go to what's practical. And, and during this time, okay, ang Egypt po kasi may Nile River, kaya bihira sa kanilang magkaroon ng, uh, ng, um, ng famine. Well, iba yung case yung kay Joseph that time, nagka-famine sila na matindi. So, pag ikaw naguguto, mantakbo nila Egypt. In fact, there was this uh, archaeological find, mga around 2,000 plus years na, na archaeological Na, na article, hindi nila matranslate, translate yung meaning, pero it's an old saying. Ang nakatranslate, Pinoy. Ang nakasulat, ang taong nagigipit sa Egypt kumakapit. Okay, so, okay, yan yung nakita nila. Grabe yan! Okay, so mga nang kasabihan nila nung araw yan, paggipit sa Egypt tayo kumapit. Anybody here? You might not experience famine in your life, na literal na famine, pero sino sa inyo rito may tagtuyot sa buhay mo? 
Maybe it's physical. I mean, talagang medyo Tom Jones ka lagi. Wala kang makain dahil wala kang trabaho. Tatlong taon na. Nasa IBM ka, okay? Standby buong maghapon. <laughs> o meron ba rito, taga PNB ka? Paalam mo ni ng biyanan? Okay, so, okay. Katira ka sa biyanan mo. Wala kang trabaho. And sometimes, famine means emotional. There's so much dryness. Emotionally, you're always depressed. Pag makulimlim, nadidepress ka. Pag sobrang araw, nadidepress ka. Lito-lito lang si Lord, hindi na alam ni Lord kung gagawin sa'yo. Pinakitaan ka ng rainbow, nadidepress ka. Buti pa siya, makulay ako. Hindi, hindi na alam ni Lord kung ano gagawin sa'yo. Pati yung langit, lito na sa'yo. Eh, saan ka ba talaga? Anybody here? Or oh, maybe not, not, not physically, not emotionally. Relationally, you're experiencing famine. You're just merely existing because of the kids. Alam mong nandiyan ka sa bahay, pero wala kayong relationship mag-asawa. Alam mo yung lalaking kasama mo, oh yan, yeah, siya lang nagbibigay ng ATM sa'yo, nasa yung ATM, pero alam mo wala kayong relationship. Lagi siya sa golf, ikaw naman sa Zumba mo, nakikita kayo pag breakfast, sino ka? Asawa mo ko. Okay. 50 years na tayo, te. And, and here's the problem. When we're in our famine, when we're in our situation na tagtuyot, we tend to do foolish things. In fact, look up here, some of your regrets in life are product of foolish or rush, hasty decision na ginawa mo. Feeling mo wala nang magbamahal sa yung lalaki, kaya nagpabuntis ka na dyan. 18 years old ka pa lang, okay? Ang daing po ang taon. Pero parang feeling mo, ito na to. Kung hindi siya, wag na lang. We rush into things na ngayon, you are in that situation because of the foolish things ginawa mo in the past. Right? It numbs our reasoning pag may famine. Pag gutom ka, ginagawa mo lahat. Eh. And then God is saying, mahal niya si Isaac, do not go there. Do not go down. Because yan ang magiging uh, uh, deterioration mo if you go down to Egypt. But sinasabi niya, just dwell in the land that sasabihin ko sa'yo, which is that time na nasa Gerar. And if you're Isaac, you can question God. God, it doesn't make sense. Nagugutom kami, kulay green doon. Pag nakita mo yung Egypt, kulay green, may party kami. Tugs, tugs, tugs. Kami, gabi kami may party. Tapos dito sa Gerar, Tom Jones. Ano ba naman yung tatawirin ko lang naman yung border? Hindi naman ako makikikain sa mga Egyptian. But God knows better, of course. Mura biga sa Egypt. Here's my question for all of us today. Are we sensitive to God's living when He intervenes in times of famine? Do we hear His voice? Or ang default natin are always practical na to eh. Single mama ko eh. Eh kahit naman mukhang babaero tong lalaki na to, bahal, willing ako pakasalan, eh kawawa namin dalawang anak ko, kahit hindi Christian to, papatusin ko na to. Practical na lang. Ma-secure ma, ma, ma the future ng dalawang anak ko. Hello? Eh, Jeff, negosyo to, Jeff. Lahat naman ang dadaya. Eh ano ba naman, Jeff, yung konting, <laughs> alam mo na, under the table. Sila kasi, including the table, Okay. Ako, konting daya lang. Anybody here? Or, or maybe, wala rito. Mabait kay lahat. Because in times of famine, survival mode, let's just be practical here, Jeff. Gawin na lang natin to. I know people. I'm, I'm a pastor. I counsel people. Na na number reasoning. And they tend to use these words, I think si God, nililid ako rito. God's will to. And nanig nyo na yun sa ka, mga ka, kapwa Christian nyo, God's will to. Tingin ko talagang God's will ni Lord to. Kasi kahit may asawa siya, nagmamahalang kami. Iba to, Jeff. <laughs> Gusto kong, okay, baka ibang Diyos siya. Baka hindi si God yan, ha. Nanig nyo na yung ganon. I think it's just God's will na mag, mag-Canada ako. Iwanan ko lang yung pitong anak ko rito, sa kay misis ko, mag-uto muna rito, pero magka-Canada ako ng 10 years lang naman. Tapos kukunin ko sila after 20 years. Tingin ko, God's will to. <laughs> Alam mo kung gusto ka ni Lord Umaman as a Canadian citizen, na, pinanganak kang Canadian. Sana pinanganak kang Amerikano kung US citizen will give you that security. Sana pinanganak kang Kano. 
But a lot of people, I'm not saying na wag kang pumunta ang America, but there are people who put their worth and value, who put their trust sa pagiging American citizen. Okay, I'm not against that. Pero, are you sensitive? Are you listening to the Word of God? Most especially when we're in famine. Because faith comes from hearing and hearing the Word of God. Isn't it? So stay there for a while. Okay? Now look up here. God is God. Alam mo, ba't hindi mo mamahalin yung Diyos na to? Okay? So here's Isaac. Sabi niya, God, sayang yung ticket ko. Connecting flight lang itong Gerard. Na full tank na yung mga camel ko. Ayan na, tumatawag na boarding time na. Pupunta na kami ng Egypt, God. Sabi ni God, dito, dito, stay ka lang dito. Hindi, God, gusto ko pumunta. Stay ka lang. May apat akong promises sa'yo. Sabi ni Isaac, o sige, pakinggan ko. Ito na. I will be with you. Talks about His presence. If you stay here and do not go to Egypt, I will be with you. In fact, I will bless you. That talks about His provision. And not only that, for you and your descendants, that talks about posterity even your future generation. And not only that, I will give all of this land, talks about prosperity. Kung meron ng DSWD na 4P program, yung pantawid, pamilya, meron ni si God na 4Ps. Come on! I mean, and by the way, just in case hindi nyo alam, yung Gerar, yan napunta sa mga tribe of Simeon, eventually, thousands, hundreds of years after. Ikaw pa kasabi ni God, hindi ka pa rin naniniwala. In fact, I'll confirm that with an oath. Yan ay totoo. Promise. <laughs> Ayan, five piece na yan. It's a promise. Now, pupunta ka pa ba ng Egypt kung yan ang pinangako sa'yo ng God mo? Of course, hindi na. Di ba? I mean, the presence of God will be with you. His provision, His posterity, His prosperity, and His promise Sa iyo lahat yan. Pero just stay here. In fact, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. We all know, binigay to sa tatay niya, si Abraham, and, and, and he knew this better. He's a son of promise. Isang downtown na si, uh, si Abraham, 90 years old yung nanay niya nung pinanganak siya. He's a son of promise. Imposible ng mga anak yung nanay niya because he's, she's barren and old. Pero pinanganak pa rin siya. So alam niya to na itong God na pa promise is not just a promise-giving God, but a promise-keeping God. So sabi niya, just in case, Isaac, nakalimutan mo, iti promise ko sa tatay mo. E patay na tatay mo, tutuloy ito sa'yo. Sabi dito, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and will give them all of these lands and through your offspring, all nations, not only you, all nations will be blessed through you. I'll tell you something. Look up here. We're blessed to be a blessing. God's blessing is way too big para sarilinin mo lang. Sometimes, yung, yung description yun ng blessing, Pastor, I'm so blessed by God. I can do whatever I want to do. I can eat whatever I want to eat. I have money in the bank. Blah, blah. Sa sa ko, I think hindi kay God galing lang yan kung para sa'yo lang. Parang ang small time ng God mo. God wants you blessed so that you'll be a blessing. Yung kuripot na kristyano, wala namang kuripot na kristyano eh. Kasi feeling niya, hindi naman to galing kay God. I earned all of this. Kaya napaka- Sari, makasarili. Ayaw i-share ang blessing because feeling niya, ako nag-amas na to, baka maubos. Pero pang mga taong alam nila na God bless them to be a blessing, they're always generous, lends freely. Kaya kitang-kita mo pag makukunat ang mga Kristiyano, iniisip nila hindi galing kay Lord to. Sa kami sa masyado tayong selfish. Wala kang ginawa. Nag-golf ako, nag-tennis ako, nag-basketball ako. Pero puro pasarap ang buhay. Ko, hindi yata kay Lord galing yan because God wants you blessed so that you'll be a channel of blessing to others. Hmm. Walang gusto mag-amen. Ako, kumita na to, Jeff. Buong buhay ko, nagtrapandikuba ako, tapos sila makikinabang. I believe God's blessing is way too big just for your own consumption. Let's continue. Because Abraham obeyed my voice, okay, and kept, ano yung mga kinip ni Abraham, yung tatay niya? He, my charge, my commandment, my statutes, my laws. Papasa ko sa iyan. Kung baka, what, what God is saying, kaya ikaw, Isaac, makinig ka. And who in the world ang naka-witness na to other than Isaac himself? Remember the story of Isaac? Binatilyo na siya nung, ini, nung, 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 uh, 
sinacrifice siya ng tatay niya. And they were up, going up to the mountain and, 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 and Isaac was still asking, ah, Dad, ah, nasan yung you offer? Parang wala naman tayong dalang animals. Ha? Sabi ni Abraham, the Lord will provide. In the mountain of the Lord, it will be provided. Nung umakita sila ng mountain, Tay, wala pa rin ba yung, ano, yung animal? Huwag kang mag-alala. Itali mo yung kamay mo. The Lord will provide. Tay, parang ako, ano, hindi. Maglalaro lang tayo. Itali mo yung kamay mo. The Lord will provide. Alam na alam to ni Isaac that God is a provider. Because nung time na sasaksakin na siya sa, dito sa puso, wait! There's a ram that was caught in a thicket. Remember? So alam niya yung credibilidad ng Diyos na to. Hindi to sumasablay. He's never late. He's never early. He's always on time because His time is always the perfect time. Look up here. Kaya ikaw na parang feeling mo si God delay. God's delays are not always His denials. Baka din i-delay ni God because hindi ka pa hinog ngayon pag para makareceive ng blessing na yan. Baka ikasira mo pa yan pagka na-bless ka na ini-expect mo na yan. He witnessed everything. So ano result? Look up here. After the four piece, after the reiteration of the, the promise, look up here. So, Isaac settled in Gerar. So parang, good boy. One point for Isaac. I mean, God's promises are bankable even in times of crisis. Tweet mo yun. Okay? <laughs> God's promises are bankable even in times of crisis. So, if we will put the chart sa faith walk ni uh, Isaac, grabe, ang tindi ng chart niya. Woo! Nag-stay siya si Gerard. Actually, pwede tayo matapos dito eh. Okay na tayo dahil God always intervenes. Hawak na niya yung ticket to Egypt. God, step into the picture. Stop. Don't go there. Stay here. Reminded of the four piece. <laughs> I'm a promise keeping God. Stay here. Yes, boss. I'll stay here. All right? So ito na. Let's continue with the story, okay? Again, God is molding this man's faith. So sabi ni Isa, okay, hanap tayo ng Airbnb. Cancel mo na yung flight to Egypt. Hindi na tayo pupunta. Sabihin mo dun sa binook nating Airbnb, cancel na. Okay, so nandito na sila sa Gerar. Okay? Now, while they're in Gerar, the men of the place, <laughs> eto na po, dito na lang problema. <laughs> yung mga lalaki doon, kasi normally, when you enter into a town, may gate. And that's the only access doon sa, sa city. So, I mean, napanood yun na may mga Game of Thrones and all, so may gate yan. Lahat ng bisita, dadaan dyan. Nung nakita yung mga tambay na geologs, nga ganun-ganun. Dayo to ah. Natipuhan si Rebecca. Remember, ganyan-ganyan yung nangyari sa nanay niya. Si Sarah, nataypan. So dito, nataypan din siya. At like father, like son, sinabi niya, utol ko. Younger sister. Ganda, no? Kuya mo ko. Okay. Why? Because takot siya. Alam niya, pag natipuhan yung asawa niya, para makuhang maging asawa yung asawa niya, the only way, patayin siya. So, pinalamas niya, katulad ng tatay niya. Same thing, kay Abimelech, yung lolo na to. She's my sister. Like father, like son. Look up here, mga tatay. Be very careful how we live our lives. Because if your children are acting like a monkey, most likely may nakikitang gorilla sa bahay yan. <laughs> Mag ganyang ugali mo. Ba't sinisigaw mo yung katulong? Dahil halika ka rito, dahil! <laughs> oh, okay, nakita na sa'yo. Ikaw yung gorilla, okay? Look up here. Parents help shape the world's future by the way they shape their children's values. What kind of example are you setting for your children? Look up here. It's more caught than taught. Ang galing mo sa words. Huwag ka magsinungaling. Igaalang mo yung ano. Nakikita yan kesa naririnig. Tumawag yung kumpare mo. Oh, uh, Junjun, uh, nandiyan ba yung tatay mo? Tay, sininong. Sabi mo, wala ako. 
啊，你弄我拉倒去，不会。Fathers, look up here. It's a very critical position when your children are growing up. I hope you're not just there as a provider. I hope more than provision, you have your presence there. Because nothing can replace you. Anybody can replace you to be the CEO. Kahit na presidente ka ng Rotary Club, kahit presidente ka ng, ng anumang club, any man can replace you. As in overnight, mag-resign ka, tatakbo yan. Wala ka pa, tumatakbo na Rotary. Hello. But the moment you resign as a father, nobody can replace you as a father. I can be replaced here any given day as a pastor. Hello, victory to matak buto kahit wala pa ako. But my my family will not run without me. So before you even think, na outside of your family you are indispensable, you're not. You are dispensable outside the family. Any given day, may pwedeng pumalit sa yung CEO, may pwedeng pumalit sa yung sa trabaho mo. Pero the moment you resign as a father, nobody can replace you. The moment you resign as a husband, it cannot be delegated. Look up here, mga daddy, tatay, tingin dito. Don't try to win battles outside the homes and you're losing the battle in the homes. You'd rather lose outside but win inside the homes but oftentimes gusto natin maging sikat sa labas ayaw mo sa mga pamilya mo you can influence you can only influence in short proximity you can actually impress from afar ang galing pastor ang galing nasa youtube you can impress in fact most of you they impress sa akin hindi joke lang but the very people closest to me my wife, my three daughters, may ampo kami So, I mean, they're the only one who can say if I'm really impressive or not. You can impress from afar, but you can only influence in close proximity. So be very careful how you live your life. Side note lang yun. Nadamay lang kayo mga tatay, okay? Okay, sabi niya, she's my sister. Okay? For he feared. Look up here. Look up here. Natakot daw siya. Kakakausap lang niya kay God, ha? yung four-piece. Remember? Tapos biglang napagpasok. Ako, natay pa niyong misis ko. Kunyari, kapatid kita. Ha? You know what fear does? Fear mocks faith. It cannot coexist. Either you're super high in faith and low in fear, but when fear arises, faith dissipates. Fear mocks our God. When you're in fear, you're mocking God. Hindi mo kaya mag-provide God. Hello ka, agree lang natin yung four piece Kukunin mo, tapos mag stay ka, kinansel mo na yung Airbnb mo sa Egypt, eh tapos ngayon, natakot ka na. I mean, I just told you, I'll be with you. Fear paralyzes Christians. Fear, F-E-A-R, false expectation appearing real. Most of our fear, hindi naman mangyayari. Ako, paano na yung ko pag nag-college? Paano na? Ang, ang takot ko? Ang dami mong fears. So, tingnan natin kanina yung graph niya. Nag-stay sa general. Kuhin, kuhin, kuhin. Bagsak ang faith. And about here, you've messed up kay God. Super hyper faith ka sa isang area, and then the following day, just one bad news, and then you're down. Anybody here? Na parang feeling mo you're hyper faith kay God, and then isang tawag lang ng doctor because of the news na nareceive mo, and then you're bam. I don't know. Well, just to show that Isaac is also a human being, and it gives us hope, isn't it? I mean, this is one of the patriarchs. And yet, ito yung buhay niya. Hindi ba kayo nabubuhayan ng loob? Unless perfect na kayo, ha? Pero kung ikaw na sala sa init, sala sa lamig, ang may fake ka, pero minsan bumabagsak, I have good news for you. I mean, this guy became one of the greatest man ever lived, being a patriarch. And yet, look at his life. And then, let's move on. When the man of the place, ganyan, she's my sister, for he feared uh, of my life, and they, uh, uh, lest the man of the place should kill me. So he was saying, can God really protect me? Ano nangyari sa offspring as numerous as the stars? 
<laughs> Kung papatayin ka ngayon, nakita niyo yung fear? Napaka-irrational, tama ba? I mean, I just told you, prosperity, posterity, provision, I just told you, bibigay ko sa yan. Unless you question God, and His sin is actually unbelief. I don't think you can protect me, God, kasi ang lalaki ng katawan na itong mga taga Gerard na to. Look up at the screen. Fear causes us to forget God's promises. I know we have a lot of, we're holding on to a lot of God's promises. I'll tell you something. When you allow fear to come in, and then you're going to forget God's faithfulness. It's hard. Then that's the reason why there are 300 plus verses in the Bible. Do not be anxious. Do not fear. Do not worry. Just so you know, you have one verse a day for the whole year. Do not fear. Do not worry. Fear won't add a single day in your life. Grabe si Lord, ano? Tinabi ka tabi mo. Sabi mo, do not fear. Sabi mo. Do not fear. Not because matapang ka. No, 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 no. We should not be, uh, uh, be anxious. We will not fear. Because why? Because somebody Jesus, I will be with you. That's the basis of our boldness and courage. Not because of your last name. Not because nanalo yung manok mo sa Senado. Not because yung mayor mo nanalo ngayon. No, 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 no. That's not the basis of your courage. The basis of your courage lies in the fact that the Almighty God is with me. Okay? So do not fear. Let's move on. When he had been there for a long time. So nang patagal to, pare. Ang patagal siya. So pinanindigan na niya na kapatid. Pag nasa palengke sila, Kuya, ano, ano, minsan madudula si Rebecca, sweetheart, ang gusto, shhh, kuya. Tapos pag mag-holding hands sila, eto na, in ni God. When he had been there a long time, I don't know how many years, Abimelech, king of the Philistine, looked out of the window, apparently, I mean, he's living beside the palace, maybe guest siya, I don't know, pero malapit siya sa king. When the king looked at the window, Nakita niya si Isaac laughing with Rebecca, his wife. You know the word laughing, um, it's a play of words no, no, ni, ni Moses, the one who wrote this. It came from the word na name ni Isaac. Because the word, the name Isaac means he laughed. So yung laughing is the same root word as Isaac, meaning to say, he's just being himself. Yung masyadong kampante. Ang ganyan si Maggie, nilalaro-laro niya yung tenga ni Rebecca. Oh, sabi, mabulo ako sa'yo. Nagkagano sila. Hula ama. Ah, mo ay so. So nagkagano na sila. Mua mua. Chup chup. Nahuli sila ngayon. Pinatawag siya nung king. Kwentuhan lang to pre ha. Kwentuhan lang. Pinatawag siya nung king. Kaya ang sarap magbasa ng Bible. Tama? Basahin yung basahin. Tatango-tango ka niya, di mo binabasa. <laughs> so Abimelech called Isaac and said, Behold, she's your wife. Hindi, uh, 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 kapatid, kapatid ko to, tol, lalik ka nga dito, tol. <laughs> Hindi, asawa mo yan. How can you say, she is my sister? Isaac said to him, umami na siya, because I thought, ito na lang yung fear, unfounded, I thought, Papatayin niyo ko because of her. Wrong perception. You know what perception does? Perception determines direction, isn't it? Ito problema sa perception. Wrong perception will lead you to wrong direction. You know what's the problem with direction? Direction determines destination. So wrong perception leads to wrong direction and eventually you land in a wrong direction. Destination. Anybody here? Puro ka perception, puro ka fear, unfounded. False expectation. Thanks be to God. I believe, si God din ang nagbulong kay Abimelech. Yung lolo na to, iba yung lolo na to, chick boy yung lolo niya, yung Abimelech na, Abimelech is a term they use pagka sa king ng Philistine, Okay? 
And, and it's very common magkakapangalan yung mga royalty. So, yung lolo na to, matindi. Nung nakita si Sarah, maganda, uh, kapatid nyo ba yan? Doon sa palasyo, kunin kita bilang asawa. Ito, medyo hindi nila kinuha agad si Rebecca. Si Sarah kinuha bilang asawa. Si Abraham, pinamigay yung kap- asawa niya. Sige, kapatid ko naman yan, kunin nyo na lang. Ang sama. Sama nila mag-ama. Pero dito kay Abimelek na lolo, God appeared in a dream. Huwag mong galawin yan because may asawa yan. And I believe it's also God who prompted this Abimelech to have this wisdom. Hindi na to kapatid. Ha? Asawa to. Ha? Because God is intervening. Look up on the screen. God's intervention realigns us to the right direction. Not to one direction. <laughs> right direction. Look up here. Very important. Makinig kayo mga Kristiyano. Oftentimes, what brings us to the wrong destination are our faulty perception. You judge others. You fear of the future without any foundation. Your unbelief will bring you to the wrong destination eventually. But God's grace, He always intervenes so that not for your own good, hello, so that His purpose will be accomplished through you. He realigns us. Sandali lang, nakagi, nakasakaliwa ka na, kumanang ka, kumanang ka. You know the word mid-course correction? Anybody here a pilot? I have some friends na tagapal dito eh. Ano ba kayo ngayon? I talked to a friend who's um, a pilot, and I talked to him kanina, si Captain Ray. Sabi ko, Captain, what do you mean by mid-course correction? Sabi niya, Pastor Jerry, explain niya sa akin lahat ng details. Tingin ko nga maroon ako magpalipad na aeroplano ngayon. Okay? So, sabi niya, Pastor Jeff, from, um, let's say, pupunta aeroplano from here to Kabanatuan. Okay? So, darating yung report namin, meron tinatawag na airways. So, that's your pathway from Manila to Kabanatuan. Wala kayo bang dadaanan. Yun yung airways mo. Yun yung parang highway mo. Hindi ka pwedeng mag-off track doon dahil baka mabangga mo yung iba o nasa taas, nasa baba, pwede mo mabangga. But then again, there are variables that leads to deviation. Ano yung mga yon? Sabi niya, there are cases, Pastor, wind or weather. Ito yung biyahe ko, mag- magbivira ko dito dahil may bad weather. Pero in the midst of the travel, I'll do mid-course correction. Meaning to say, it's a navigational correction made in the course of a ship or a plane or a rocket at some point between the beginning and the end of the journey. Ikinokorek mo. Okay, hindi tayo babagsak ng kabanatuan pagka hindi mo kinorek yan. Okay, habang lumilipad, korek mo, korek mo, korek mo. Kanan tayo, kanan. Ibawiin mo yung lakas ng hangin dito, medyo ikiling mo sa kanan. They're doing mid-course correction. And I'll tell you something. Some of you have fallen and you think, hindi ka na maridim. Some of you have sinned so bad. Iniwanan mo yung pamilya mo, nag-asawa ka ng iba, nag-anak ka sa iba, nag-drug addict ka, nag-prostitute ka, nag ka ng drug, nag ka ng maraming tao sa pera. And some of you feeling mo, you are irredeemable. You are parang wala ka ng pag-asa. I have good news for you. A righteous man may fall seven times, but he rise again. God gives us the opportunity to rise again because it's not your own doing. God will give you the grace to do those mid-course correction. Let me ask you this question. What areas in our life do we need God's mid-course corrections? Ikaw na naligaw na ng landas. Ikaw na parang feeling mo, hindi ka na maridim. Ikaw na parang pakiramdam mo, you're filthy and dirty. I'll ask you this one thing. What are the things that you willing kang i-give up? What are some things na reluctant ka to stop? Even na alam mong mali yung live-in situation na yan. Even na mali yung same-sex relationship mo na yan. Even mali yung pag-porn mo na yan. What are the things na alam mong mali but you're having a hard time to stop? I'll give you good news. The mid-course correction, God will give you the grace. My friend Pilot says, Pastor Jeff, actually, hindi na yung problema mga piloto yan because it's autopilot. The computer will compute it and do the necessary mid-course correction. 
I'll give you good news. God is our pilot. God is our computer. Wherever you are right now, there's no sin na hindi niya pinagbayaran sa cross. Come on, let's give him praise. Come on, I mean. What are the things that you're inclined to jumpstart? You're eager to establish. What are the ties that you're willing to cut? I was talking, I was over the phone with someone the other day uh, at uh, Facebook. Sabi niya, Pastor, yung wife ko, para meron daw middle, uh, uh, middle something crisis, so nakikipag-chat sa ex niya. Wow. Sabi ko, ba't mo pinayagan? Eh, parang ano lang, para lang daw, ano, ma, 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 sa mga friends, ma-reconnect. Wow. What are those relationships that you need to cut? Yung love letter ng ex mo, sunugin mo na yan. Ilabalik-balik ka mo pa, elementary pa kayo nun eh. Yung picture ng ex mo, nasa'yo pa. Look up here. We are all work in progress. I have good news for you. There's so much room to be corrected sa atin. There's so much space for improvement. And God has eternity to correct that. Amen? Let's continue. No, Bimalek said, Ano yung ginawa mo sa amin? Pwede yung isa sa mga tao ko have sex with your wife and brought us guilt. Nakakatawa <laughs> naman tong king na to. Mas righteous pa tong pagan king kesa sa kanya. Because si Isaac, committed na siya. Pag napagtripang ka, wala tayong magagawa. Kapatid kita kunyari, pero pag kinuha ka asawa, we have no choice. Kesa patayin ako. Hello, I'm a, I'm a son of promise. Remember, I mean, he set for his wife makuha ng king at ng mga tao. Because pinanindigan na niya, kapatid siya. Nakita niyo kung gano'n ka sama to si Isaac. But God loves him, loves you. He doesn't want you to stay that way. But the question is, are we sensitive? Nakikinig ka ba? Willing ka bang magkaroon ng mid-course correction? Papakasalan mo ba yung babae na yan? Titigil mo ba yung drugs na yan? Titigil mo na ba yung insecure mo? Yung envy mo? Browse ka ng browse sa Facebook, walang katapusan, at napupuno ka ng inggit after mong mag-browse. Because you're full of envy and bitterness and resentment. Wow. Some of you need to cut social media. Para lang maayos ang buhay nyo. Hanggat hindi pa ayos yung inggit mo. Yung iba naman post ng post. Ang ganda ng kotse, may Bible verse, naiinggit yung mga ibang kasamahan mo. Tigilan mo na muna yan. Baka hindi nagiging magandang testimony. I get in the point. Don't cause anyone to stumble. That's what the Bible says. But if you post, make it count. Make it purposeful. Huwag mo lang tabihan ng Bible verse yung kotse mo o yung ano... Alam mo, kilala mo ng Bible verse sa kotse mo. So Abimelech warned all the people saying, whoever touches this man will die. Grabe tong king na to. Bili ba ko rito? You know what happened after that? He started planting. <laughs> Nagtanim. <laughs> Nahuli na tayo. Tanim na lang tayo. <laughs> At tingin ko, nakatingin, nakat, nakatira siya sa palasyo. Eh. Ngayon, parang pinalabas sila eh. Kasi sabi nito, I, I don't know, I have to read more commentaries about this. Pero sabi nito, and Isaac sowed in the land. I mean, he's a big boss. May mga tauan siya. But he personally sowed in the land. And in the same year, Wow, this is a time of famine. And yet, in the same year, he harvested a hundredfold. You know what a hundredfold means? It's a, it's a Hebrew word that means extreme measure of productiveness. It's actually rare and extraordinary. In spite of famine, in spite of sin, God bless Isaac and Gerard. You see, sin hinders God's blessing, isn't it? But if we are... Humble enough to repent, turn from sin, change of mind. The word repent means change of mind and change of direction. Go back to God. Go back to God. Go back to God. Go back to God. God will bless you. You know the word hundredfold? 
God bless him. By the way, the word bless was mentioned five times in this chunk of chapter. The word bless simply means barak. It's a Hebrew word that means it's use of sharing oneself, giving oneself away. It's supremely use of God blessing people by conferring His benefits on them by His word. Look at the word. The word blessing, hindi yung idea natin misa ng blessing. I am so blessed. Pumasa ako sa, sa may exam. Yeah, yeah, maybe that's part of it. I'm so blessed. May bago kong kotse. Yeah, maybe that's part of it. I'll tell you what blessing is. Real blessing draws you closer to God. I know people na blessed, hindi na nakapag church. I know people no na bless hindi na nakakapunta na simbahan. I know people na, na promote hindi na nakakapag small group. Sasang parang hindi yan yung blessing ni God. The blessing of the Lord brings wealth and he adds no trouble to it. You know what a real blessing is? A real blessing is when it brings you closer to God. Alam mo bless ako sa trabaho na to. Bakit? Grabe. Yung trabaho na ito, nagkaroon akong chance mag-share ng gospel sa mga kopisina ko. Yung boss ko, hindi, na nag, na, hindi, hindi galit sa gospel. I, I'm now discipling people. That's what real blessing is. And oftentimes, you, you equate blessing with your bank account. Where did you get that idea? Na pagpataas ang bank account, you're blessed. Yeah, maybe that's part of it, but I'll tell you something. God's blessing is way, way, way than just having a rich bank account. God's blessing draws you closer to Him. You, you're used by God to draw people to Him. That's what blessing is. And it doesn't care kahit ilan mansion mo. Kung wala namang small group dyan sa mansion mo, nangyari dyan. Pitong kondo mo, ano ngayon? May small group ka ba ngayon dyan? Like, are you reaching out to people? Yung pitong kondo mo, pag small group mo lahat ng tao dyan, use it for God's glory. I-house mo yung mga missionary natin na nagtatravel dito, man sinang wife for the MPD, yung pitong kondo mo, bahay mo dyan yung mga campus missionary natin na hindi na mag That's what meant when you're being a blessing. It's not just for personal consumption. Guys, small, small time ng God nyo kung ganun. Kung blessing stops at you, that's a small time God. God's blessing overflows through you. And he who refreshes others will be more refreshed. He became so rich. Look up the verse. Uh, 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 do I have to mention you? This is famine. Gerar is in the border of a desert. Ilang beses siya nagukay ng well, laging may tubig, which is parang nakajakpat siya sa loto na one billion during that time. And look at the verse. He became rich. And gain more and more until he became very wealthy. And he had possession of flocks and herds and many servants, so that the Philistines envied him. Don't be a Jerarites. Sino mga Jerarites dito? Yun ay ingit ka sa blessing ng iba. Pag ikaw na kita kita. Alam mo yung na ingit ka pag bless yung ibang tao. Tapos ang sama ano? Pinagdadasal mo, di ba? Nag-post. Driving my new car. New car? Utang lang naman sa bangko yan eh. Tapos the following day, nabangga. Oh, I'm so, uh, I'm so sad. Nabangga kochi ko. Gusto mo i-like. <laughs> di ba ang sama? You're wishing ill of other people. Pag may envy ka, it will kill you. It will kill your joy. Kasi masaya ka. Tapos bigla may mas magandang Rolex yung kapitbahay mo. Ang pangit na ng Rolex ko. Mas maganda ka niya. Nakikita mo yung envy. It will never stop. So don't be a Jerarite. Sino may katabi mo? Sino mo, huwag kang Jerarites, ha? Huwag kang Jerarites. Yun yung mga Jerarites na iingget sa yaman ng iba. Ikaw naman na Israelites, ikaw naman, you're blessing other people. That's what you're blessing. Payaman ka ng payaman kasi you're being a blessing to others. I know people like that. They're always generous and lends freely. They will never beg for bread. I'll end na. Masyado na kayong basag. Okay? <laughs> Alaan nyo, ha? Kilala ko kayo. We can experience God's extraordinary blessing even in the midst of famine. Guys, I love you enough to tell you the hard truth. I love you enough to tell you the truth. The blessing of God is, is not just for your own consumption. Maybe kaya hindi binibigay ni Lord yung pinagpe-pray mo. Kasi puro ang prayer mo. And I know this because we have your prayer request every Tuesday. Nasa table namin yan. Pinagpipray ng buong staff yan. 
And often times, alam niya, puro makasarili. Umayos ako, gumaling ako, and, and that's good, that's good, that's good. Pero pray that you'll be so rich, and that's my prayer for you, you'll be all so filthy rich, so that you will all be a blessing to others. Nambang may tumayo rito campus missionary, katulad nila Hannah at nila Joyce, hindi nila kailangan mag-look for partner, you'll partner with them. Hindi na kailangan ng mga missionary na parang, parang uh, may report, yes, and then, Pastor, sino yung missionary na yun sa, sa Nepal? Patala mo nga lang isang million yun, parang hindi ko kilala yun eh. Hindi ko pa kilala, pero isang million na patala mo, Pastor. Wow. <laughs> and often time, yung blessing sa iyo lang. Apat na bahay mo, gusto pan limang bahay. Wow, wala nga tumitira sa tatlo eh. Nakikita mo how futile we are when we think of blessing? I'll tell you something. In the midst of blessing, God wants you blessed so that you will be a blessing to others. Let's all stand. So with all these rapid changes, let me end here. Oh, kaya nga rin yung isa. Oh. Sorry ate, ate na maangka. So okay lang yan. Lahat tayo. When I was preparing this, ako sapul na sapul, sabi ko, pambira mo kung hindi ako tuwa. Pero magre-repent ako, Lord, para, para kahit pa paano, may mabira mo na kong sabihin sa mga tao. I'll tell you something. Look up here. God loves you. Alam ko yung iba sa inyo, first time, don't worry. Bumalik ka next week, baka <laughs> medyo, medyo subtle. Pero I think this is for you. Kaya ka nandito ngayon. Pasalamatan mo yung taong nagdala sa'yo ngayon dito. God loves you. And God has a plan for you. God has a purpose for your existence. And it goes beyond just for your personal consumption. God wants to use you to be a blessing to a lot of people. And God is building your faith, my faith. And it's never too late. Tigil mo na envy mo, pare. Tigil mo na yung unforgiveness mo, mare. Baguhin na natin yung buhay. Hindi ko parang sasawa. Ulit-ulit na lang. Linggo-linggo siya sabi ni Pastor. Exactly, that's my point. Hindi ako titigil linggo-linggo hanggang hindi ka nababago ni Lord. Because you're never gonna experience God's promise of life, the Zoe life, unless you're ready to let go of everything and just let God do it. Lord, have it your way. I'll settle in my Gerard. Raise your hands. Lord, Lord, it's hard to live in this world, to live for others. Because Lord, itong mundo na to have been designed to live for self. The moment we were born, ang mindset na namin is how to be successful and that ends there. How to be rich, how to be glamorous. Uh, puro na lang sarili. But Lord, thank you because kami mga Kristiyano, you have never designed us that way. In fact, you designed us to be a blessing for others. In fact, the whole 600 plus commandments, you sum up into two. Love God and love others. Walang love yourself because that's our nature to love ourselves. That's why you're teaching us in the midst of famine to trust you. You want to fix us so that we can be a blessing to others. So Lord, today, those people needing mid-course correction, we are raising our hands. Lord, have it your way. Kung kailangan tanggalin, tanggalin. Kung kailangan baguhin, baguhin. Kung kailangan simulan, simulan. Pero Lord, huwag namin sayangin yung buhay namin. Pakikristya-kristyano, aaten dito pag Sabado, and then yung buhay, balik na naman sa dati. Walang pagbabago. Pero Lord, it will end today. Give us the grace to stop and to some to start. But either way, we're lifting our hands to you as a sign of surrender. Have it your way. Do whatever mid-course correction you want to do, Lord God. We're going to be sensitive, just like Isaac, to hear your word. Lord, please intervene, Lord God, in our midst. Father, stop na namin yung pagiging religious. Simba-simba, pero walang binabago sa sarili. You have been intervening, but we're turning a deaf ear. Right now, it will stop. We're gonna hear you. We're gonna listen to you. We're gonna apply those mid-course correction. In the name of Jesus Christ, these people raising their hands, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, 
refresh them. Tanggalin mo na, Lord, yung paglalaro nila sa Christianity, but they may embrace you for who you are because you're forming their faith. You want them to be a man after your own heart, to be a woman after your own heart, to be a man and woman of faith. So the people around us will see, totoo yung Diyos mo. So Lord, right now, we repent. We repent right now, Lord God, sa mga kasalanan na hindi namin mag-give up, sa mga relationship na hindi namin maputol-putol na alam naming mali, sa mga uh, uh, habits na alam namin nagsasayang kami ng pera, alam naming mali. In the name of Jesus Christ, right now, we repent. Refresh us, Lord God, because you're the only unchanging God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Come on, let's give Him praise. Ang bihira naman, ang laki ng Diyos natin. Come on, let's give Him praise. Come on, don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Come on, let's give Him praise. He's worthy of all our praise. Come on. He's bigger than that. Come on, let's give Him praise. Our God is great. He'll change you. He'll mold you. He'll raise you to a next level of faith. He'll give you, He'll refresh you. Come on, let's give Him praise. Come on. He's way better than that. He's gonna give you, refresh you. That's the God we're serving. Amen? Come on now. Praise you, God. Amen.